Hey, Bob Duffy from Intel here, and I want to show you guys something. That's rendering in cycles in Blender using Intel Iris XE integrated graphics and Intel Iris XE Max discrete graphics. Yeah, you heard me right. I said using integrated graphics and rendering in cycles. Like, why bother? Why would you do that? Well, here's the thing. Integrated graphics have gotten quite good lately. And the other is, you know, it's silicon in my system. I want to use it. Give me that option. Well, that is an option now with something called Intel Deep Link. Intel Deep Link is a technology from Intel that allows you to make use of the full power of the platform. Use the CPU, use the integrated graphics, and use the GPU. You can use it on various workloads like encoding, decoding, uh, additive AI, and now you can also use it in workloads like rendering in Blender. And just so you know, I'm using an Asus Vivo Book Flip 14 here. Let me let me show you. It's running Blender 2.93 Alpha, and it's a nice little device that can actually run cycles. Let's give it a shot. Without further ado, I'm going to go to my settings, go to preferences, I set to OpenCL here, and I got everything on. If it's silicon, I'm going to use it. So let's render and render the image. And so you guys can see what's going on here. Um, my CPU is being put to task. My integrated graphics is working, as well as my discrete GPU, all cranking away in order to get this render out. It's a little noisy right now, but through the magic of open image denoise and artificial intelligence, that'll all get cleaned up. And there we go, about 18 to 19 seconds, and this guy is done. And it's a pretty good render on that sweet little device. Um, let me show you some of the settings that I've got going on so you so you can uh, be armed with the knowledge to do this right. <laughs> um, this is the scene I have. It's a simple scene. There's not a lot of geometry going on, but I've got glass, so we've got some caustics and we've got reflection and refraction going on. And there's an HDRI in the background. So with that, um, what I'm doing is cycles, obviously. A feature set you can do supported, but that depends what, what you got going on in your scene. I uh, set it to GPU, and here in this one, I set my render samples to 32, and that's because I'm using the open image denoise in the compositor, and um, you can see another video that I have on that, but if, if you have the uh, denoise node in and you have uh, the denoise uh, information turned on, um, you can then plug that in, but let me bypass it so you can see how that looks. If I bypass it, this is actually what the render look like. It's quite noisy, especially in the areas of low light. But with the denoise turned on through the magic of AI, voila, it's beautiful. Thanks to the Intel Open Image denoise there in the compositor. So I can get away with lower samples. Uh, and I tried it at 64 samples. Um, and 32 actually worked pretty well, so I stuck with that. Um, the other thing you can look at is, uh, I'm sorry, I, I forgot to say, adaptive sampling. Um, this is a key trick to save you guys time, uh, save you co compute processing power. Um, my background here is an HDRI, works pretty well to light my scene, but I don't need to do a lot of samples in that because I can just pass that image information to the camera. But in areas where I've got low light and I've got geometry, I may need higher samples. So adaptive sampling from a minimal threshold of four all the way up to 32, and that gives me a good render, as you guys saw. Um, you can also play with tile size. I think I've got my tile size here set to 256. I'm using both CPU and GPU. So yeah, it's somewhere in between there. And let me go ahead and try this another way so you can, guys can see the results. So let me try it in a typical situation that you would not be able to do that you can do now. So I'm going to turn off the discrete graphics. So now I've got my CPU and my integrated GPU, which every device has out there. And this is what you haven't been able to do before, but now you can do with 11th gen processor plus deep link. So there we go. Turn that, got that turned on, going to render that. And let's go back and look at what's going on. So again, here again, my CPU is cranking away, my GPU integrated graphics working and my discrete GPU not really working, but I could use it for something else, Twitch, OBS, something, whatever I want. There we go. That looks like this is going to get done close to the same time. A little, taking a little bit more time to do, but that's fine. That, that was a decent rendering time for using my CPU and integrated graphics. But the thing is, you now have the option to do this. You as the artist, the developer, the creator can choose which silicon you want to play for you. And I choose 
I choose it all. <laughs> let me let, let it all play. <laughs> well, that's a wrap of this video. To recap, use Blender 2.9 Alpha in Intel DeepLink to make use of the full platform. That would be the CPU, the integrated graphics, and the discrete graphics when rendering in Blender. And also use features like Intel Open Image Denoise and adaptive sampling to speed your render. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe below. And I thank you for joining us. Until next time, I'm your host, Bob Duffy. We'll catch you later.